This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. Hey guys, so it's been a couple of days and I decided I'd go ahead and I'd make another robot or companion build for you guys. Uh, so today we're going to be do our quasi ranged assault type automatron that uses projectile weapons instead of melee weapons. Uh, like last time, I wanted this thing to be able to kill a mythic deathclaw on both normal and survival mode. Uh, now, while they can't go one on one with a death claw and always come out on the other side, uh, if you do kind of like distract the death claw, uh, this thing will like kill it in under like 10 seconds. So that is still pretty impressive. Now, before I get into the core components here, I'll go ahead and I'll go over the specific perk and level requirements. Uh, to build this specific robot, you will need to be at least level 39 and have the armorer perk fully maxed out. Uh, you will need the science perk to be at level 3 or higher, and a robotics expert perk of level 1 or higher. Uh, like last time, you will also need to have completed the main quest line in the Automatron DLC. This way you have all of the crafting components available to you, as opposed to some, like, only, like, the basic beginner parts. Uh, so if you haven't completed the DLC, uh, go do that and then come back for this ultimate ranged slash assault robot or Automatron companion build. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and I'll discuss my choices for the core components. So this build is essentially a sentry bot headpiece, a robo brain torso, sentry bot arms, and assaultron leg pieces. Now, the big reason I chose the sentry bot head is that it has the highest engagement distance, uh, and it's only bested by the robo brain head. Uh, I didn't choose the robo brain helm because I don't like the mesmatron attack taking over the normal arm weapon attacks like they often do. Uh, I also didn't choose the Assaultron heads or the Protectron head because each of these has a lower engagement distance or in the case of the Protectron head which has the same engagement distance uh, it overall just has less accuracy. Uh, the SentryBot arms have high carry weight and that's why I chose those uh, and the Robo Brain torso has relatively high health. Now while the SentryBot torso has more health the problem with the SentryBot torso is that it overheats during combat, and in my opinion, this is a major problem if you rely on your robot companion for additional damage output, and if he's constantly overheating and then being incapacitated, uh, he's going to get killed. Uh, as for the legs, Assaultron legs simply have the highest movement speed and in my opinion are really the way to go. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that Robo Brain Treads and Mr. Handy Leg Jets can't have quite as many armor pieces placed on the legs. Uh, now, the Sentry Legs can have more armor pieces placed on them than the Assaultron Legs, but the problem with these is that they restrict movement in confined spaces. Now, there are the Protectron Legs, but those are slower than the Assaultron Legs. So again, I just ultimately decided to go with the Assaultron legs. As for weapons and armor, I opted to go with the dual Gatling lasers, uh, Voltaic armor primarily, although you could also use hydraulic armor. Uh, and if your level is high enough, I especially recommend that you get the Space Monkey Helm for the sentry bot headpiece. I ultimately chose dual Gatling lasers because I decided I didn't really like the missile launcher uh, and I didn't really like the minigun at all. And really I kind of thought the minigun in particular uh, was just very mediocre. Now, while the unstable Gatling lasers and miniguns are better. Uh, we're talking about the unstable miniguns here. Uh, they do break during combat, and that lack of reliability can make your robot companion virtually useless if you get stuck in a bad situation. Um, as for our armor, I ultimately went with Voltaic for the improved energy damage and better carry weight over the hydraulic versions. Uh, another thing that's interesting about that is that the Voltaic version has a lower armor requirement. Uh, as well. Uh, now, while you do lose some damage resistance, the idea behind this build is to keep enemies at like medium range uh, while your robot just like blasts them into oblivion. Um, I also highly recommend the unstable Space Monkey Helmet uh, for significantly better energy damage. Uh, and in fact, this piece in particular provides the large bulk of the damage that you're going to be seeing in this video. Now, of course, the only problem with the Space Monkey Helmet is that you need to be like level 39 with a level 4 armorer perk 
Um, now, if you are using power armor and you're upgrading it regularly, uh, this isn't going to be that big of an issue. It's also worth mentioning that the Space Monkey Helm can break, so just be aware of that. All right, so now that I have the whole build laid out for you guys, let's go ahead and we'll talk about some of the weaknesses that I've observed with this particular build. Uh, the first and arguably most important here is that even the regular stable Gatling lasers uh, do have a tendency to break. Now, I don't know if this is a glitch or a bug with the Automatron DLC, uh, but what can happen sometimes is that if an enemy deals enough damage to your robot, or like specifically it like targets the weapons uh, and they blow up, uh, he's not going to be able to fight back until you kill every other other enemy uh, in the area and that is a real pain if you are really reliant upon your robot companion for damage uh, then again uh, if this thing happened to your melee character uh, you would probably be in a similar situation now while I've rarely ever had the space monkey helm break uh, and as I mentioned earlier uh, this thing can break uh, if this thing breaks, you're going to lose a decent amount of uh, your overall damage output. Uh, now, this won't matter so much up against most enemies in the game, uh, but it will matter if you want to kill a Mythic Deathclaw. And from what I've observed is that the damage increases do make a big difference in being able to kill a Mythic Deathclaw in, say, about 5 to 10 seconds versus, like, 15 to 20. So keep that in mind. Now this final weakness is more related to the AI of robot companions in general. Uh, now sometimes you can get in combat and your robot companions won't react until either of you have attacked something, uh, you've been hit by something, or the robot has been hit. And sometimes there is also a bit of a delay in this re reaction and you can wait about a second or two each time before your robot attacks. And this can be kind of a pain because if an enemy attacks your robot and destroys the weapons, uh, you are going to really hate your robot companion as he's going to be useless to you. In summary though, I really like using this build and provided you can keep the robot out of the line of some really serious fire, uh, you can pretty much use this guy to kill a lot of the very tough enemies in the game relatively quickly. Uh, I've had this thing kill Mythic Deathclaws. I've also had this thing kill Ancient Behemoths, which the melee build, because I guess it just gets staggered so much, uh, can't really accomplish that. And really, the dual Gatling lasers are pretty powerful. And unlike my last build, um, this particular build can carry a lot more stuff. I think the fully maxed out one had only like 100 carry weight. And this one's got about like 360 or so, so that is a definite improvement. Uh, and he may be more practical to you um, if you want a decent carry weight on your robot companion. Anyway guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. As always, take care and I'll see you all next time.